The Abyssinia Crisis was a crisis in 1935 originating in what was called the Walwal Incident in the then ongoing conflict between the Kingdom of Italy and the Empire of Ethiopia then commonly known as Abyssinia in Europe. The League of Nations ruled against Italy and voted for economic sanctions, but they were not fully applied. Italy ignored the sanctions, quit the League, made special deals with Britain and France and ultimately established control of Ethiopia. The crisis discredited the League and moved fascist Italy closer to an alliance with Nazi Germany. Both Ethiopia and Italy pursued a policy of provocation against each other and Italy prepared for invasion in Ethiopia, described as follows by the League of Nations. At places where there is not a single Italian national, a consul establishes himself in an area known as consular territory with a guard of about 90 men, for whom he claims jurisdictional immunity. This is an obvious abuse of consular privileges. The abuse is all the greater that the consul's duties, apart from the supplying of information of a military character, take the form of assembling stocks of arms, which constitute a threat to the peace of the country, whether from the internal or the international point of view. The Walwal Incident The Italo-Ethiopian Treaty of 1928 stated that the border between Italian Somaliland and Ethiopia was 21 leagues from and parallel to the Benadir coast approximately 118.3 kilometers 73.5 miles. In 1930, Italy built a fort at the Walwal Oasis also Walwal, Italian, UALUAL in the Agaden, well beyond the 21-league limit. The fort was in a boundary zone between the nations, which was not well defined. Today it is about 130 kilometers, 81 miles inside Ethiopia. On the 29th of September 1934, Italy and Abyssinia released a joint statement renouncing any aggression against each other. On the 22nd of November 1934, a force of 1000 Ethiopian militia with 3 fitterari, Ethiopian military political commanders, arrived near Walwal and formally asked the Dubats garrison stationed there, comprising about 60 soldiers, to withdraw from the area. The Somali NCO leading the garrison refused to withdraw and alerted Captain Simaruta, commander of the garrison of Uardar, 20 kilometers 12 miles away, to what had happened. The next day, in the course of surveying the border between British Somaliland and Ethiopia, an Anglo-Ethiopian boundary commission arrived at Walwal. The commission was confronted by a newly arrived Italian force. The British members of the boundary commission protested, but withdrew to avoid an international incident. The Ethiopian members of the Boundary Commission, however, stayed at Walwal between 5 and the 7th of December for reasons which have never been clearly determined. There was a skirmish between the garrison of Somalis who were in Italian service and a force of armed Ethiopians. According to the Italians, the Ethiopians attacked the Somalis with rifle and machine gun fire. According to the Ethiopians, the Italians attacked them supported by two tanks and three aircraft. In the end, approximately 107 Ethiopians and 50 Italians and Somalis were killed. Neither side did anything to avoid confrontation. The Ethiopians repeatedly menaced the Italian garrison with the threat of an armed attack, while the Italians sent two planes over the Ethiopian camp. One of them fired a short machine gun burst, which no one on the ground noticed, after the pilot saw Captain Simaruta in the midst of the Ethiopians and thought he had been taken prisoner by them. International response and subsequent actions On 6 December 1934, Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia protested Italian aggression at Walwal. On 8 December, Italy demanded an apology for Ethiopian aggression and, on of December, followed up this demand with another for financial and strategic compensation. On 3 January 1935, Ethiopia appealed to the League of Nations for arbitration of the dispute arising from the Walwal incident. But the League's response was inconclusive. A subsequent analysis by an arbitration committee of the League of Nations absolved both parties of any culpability for what had happened. Shortly after Ethiopia's initial appeal, Minister of Foreign Affairs Pierre Laval of France and Foreign Secretary Samuel Hoare of the United Kingdom met with Italian dictator Benito Mussolini in Rome. On 7 January 1935, a meeting between Laval and Mussolini resulted in the Franco Italian Agreement. This treaty gave Italy parts of French Somaliland now Djibouti, redefined the official status of Italians in French-held Tunisia, and essentially gave the Italians a free hand in dealing with Ethiopia. 
In exchange, France hoped for Italian support against Germany. On the 25th of January, five Italian Askaris were killed by Ethiopian forces near Walwal. On the 10th of February 1935, Mussolini mobilized two divisions. On the 23rd of February, Mussolini began to send large numbers of troops to Eritrea and Italian Somaliland, which were the Italian colonies that bordered Ethiopia to the northeast and southeast, respectively. There was little international protest in response to this buildup. On the 8th of March, Ethiopia again requested arbitration and noted Italian military buildup. Three days later, Italy and Ethiopia agreed on a neutral zone in the Agaden. On the 17th of March, in response to continued Italian buildup, Ethiopia again appealed to the League for help. On the 22nd of March, the Italians yielded to pressure from the League of Nations to submit to arbitration on the dispute arising from the Walwal incident, but continued to mobilize its troops in the region. On the 11th of May, Ethiopia again protested the ongoing Italian mobilization. Between 20 and the 21st of May, the League of Nations held a special session to discuss the crisis in Ethiopia. On 25 May, a League Council resolved that it would meet if no fifth arbitrator had been selected by 25 June, or if a settlement was not reached by 25 August. On 19 June, Ethiopia requested neutral observers. From 23 to 24 June, the United Kingdom tried to quell the crisis, sending Under Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs Anthony Eden to try to broker a peace agreement. The attempt was unsuccessful, and it became clear that Mussolini was intent on conquest. On 25 July, the United Kingdom imposed an embargo on arms sales to both Italy and Ethiopia. Many historians believe that the embargo was a response to Italy's decree that it would view arms sales to Ethiopia as an act of unfriendliness toward Italy while other observers believe that the United Kingdom was protecting her economic interests in East Africa. The United Kingdom also cleared its warships from the Mediterranean, allowing Italy further unhindered access to eastern Africa. On the 25th of June, Italian and Ethiopian officials met in The Hague to discuss arbitration. By the 9th of July, these discussions had fallen apart. On the 26th of July, the League confirmed that no fifth member of the arbitration panel had been selected. On 3 August, the League limited arbitration talks to matters other than the sovereignty of Walwal. On 12 August, Ethiopia pleaded for the arms embargo to be lifted. On 16 August, France and the United Kingdom offered Italy large concessions in Ethiopia to try to avert war, but Italy rejected the offers. On of August, Britain reaffirmed its commitment to the arms embargo. On 4 September, the League met again and exonerated both Italy and Ethiopia of any culpability in the Walwal incident, on the ground that each nation had believed Walwal was within its own territorial borders. On 10 September, Pierre Laval, Anthony Eden, and even Sir Samuel Hoare agreed on limitations to sanctions against Italy. On 25 September, Ethiopia again asked for neutral observers. On 27 September, the British Parliament supported the initiative of Kani Ziliakis and unanimously authorised the imposition of sanctions against Italy should it continue its policy towards Ethiopia. On 28 September, Ethiopia began to mobilise its large but poorly equipped army. On November 7, the Irish Free State passed the League of Nations Bill, placing sanctions on Italy. The war and occupation On 3 October 1935, shortly after the League exonerated both parties in the Walwal incident, Italian armed forces from Eritrea invaded Ethiopia without a declaration of war, prompting Ethiopia to declare war on Italy, thus beginning the Second Italo Abyssinian War. On 7 October, in what would come to be known as the Riddell Incident, the League of Nations declared Italy to be the aggressor, and started the slow process of imposing sanctions on Italy. The sanctions were limited, however. They did not prohibit the provision of several vital materials, such as oil, and were not carried out by all members of the League. The United States, generally indifferent to the League of Nations' weak sanctions, increased its exports to Italy, and the United Kingdom and France did not take any serious action against Italy, such as blocking Italian access to the Suez Canal. Even Italy's use of chemical weapons and other actions that violated international norms did little to change the League's passive approach to the situation. In late December 1935, Hoare of the United Kingdom and Laval of France proposed the secret Hoare Laval plan, which would have ended the war but allowed Italy to control large areas of Ethiopia. Mussolini agreed to the plan, but it caused an outcry in the United Kingdom and France when the plan was leaked to the media. 
Hoare and Laval were accused of betraying the Abyssinians, and both resigned. Their plan was dropped, but the perception spread that the United Kingdom and France were not serious about the principles of the League. The war continued, and Mussolini turned to German dictator Adolf Hitler for alliance. In March 1936, Hitler marched troops into the Rhineland, which had been prohibited by the Treaty of Versailles. The French were now desperate to get Italian support against German aggression directly on their border, so would not take any further action with sanctions. France was prepared to give Abyssinia to Mussolini, so his troops were able to continue their war relatively unchallenged by the rest of Europe. Haile Selassie was forced into exile on 2 May. All the sanctions that had been put in place by the League were dropped after the Italian capture of the Ethiopian capital of Addis Ababa on 5 May 1936. Ethiopia was then merged with the other Italian colonies to become Italian East Africa, Africa Oriental Italiana, or Aoi. Ethiopia never officially surrendered, and pleaded for help from foreign nations, such as Haile Selassie's 7 June 1936 address to League of Nations. As a result, there were six nations which did not recognize Italy's occupation in 1937, China, New Zealand, the Soviet Union, the Republic of Spain, Mexico and the United States. Italian control of Ethiopia was never total, due to continued guerrilla activity, which the British would later use to their advantage during World War II. However, by 1940 Italy was in complete control of three quarters of the country. Aftermath The end of the Aoi came quickly during World War II. In early 1941, as part of the East African Campaign, Allied forces launched offensive actions against the isolated Italian colony. On 5 May 1941, five years after the Italians had captured his capital, Emperor Haile Selassie entered Addis Ababa. There were also major impacts on the League of Nations. Hor Laval showed distrust of Britain and France themselves in the League. Hitler began reversing the Treaty of Versailles with the Rhineland remilitarization. Britain and France looked weaker still, seen by Germany, Italy and the United States. Topic. See also Timeline of the Second Italo-Abyssinian War Italo-Ethiopian Treaty of 1928 Kellogg-Bryan Pact of 1929 Munich Crisis of 1938 Second Italo-Abyssinian War Freedom of the Press in the Kingdom of Italy Topic. Notes Footnotes Citations Topic. Further reading Baer, George W. Test Case, Italy, Ethiopia, and the League of Nations 1976. Barker, A. J. Rape of Ethiopia, 1936. New York, Ballantine Books. pp. 160 pages. ISBN 978-0-345-02462-6. Corthorne, Paul Stephen. Quote, the British Labour Party and the League of Nations 1933-5. PhD Dist. Durham University, 1999, online. Franchak, Joseph. Local People's Global Politics, a Transnational History of the Hands-Off Ethiopia Movement of 1935. Diplomatic History 2014, doi, 10.1093, dh, dht 127 Kent, Peter G. Between Rome and London, Pius XI, the Catholic Church, and the Abyssinian Crisis of 1935–1936. International History Review 11 No. 2 252–271. Marcus, Harold G. A History of Ethiopia. London, University of California Press. p. 316. ISBN 0-520-22479-5. Mockler, Anthony Haile Selassie's War. New York, Olive Branch Press. ISBN 978-1-56656-473-1. Nicole, David the Italian Invasion of Abyssinia 
Westminster, M.D., Osprey. pp. 48 pages. ISBN 978-1-85532-692-7. Shin, David Hamilton, Ivkansky, Thomas P., and Prouty, Chris 2004. Historical Dictionary of Ethiopia. Scarecrow Press. p. 633. Post Jr., Gaines. The Machinery of British Policy in the Ethiopian Crisis. International History Review 1 No. 4 1979, 522-541. Strang, G. Bruce. The Worst of All Worlds, Oil Sanctions and Italy's Invasion of Abyssinia, 1935-1936. Diplomacy and Statecraft 19.2 210-235. External links Provocations. Time magazine. December 31, 1934. Retrieved January 3, 2010. Ethiopia 1935-1936.